Hi everyone. Um, at this point you will have done your wire forms and your sketches and research about bugs. And let's just say I'm going to go with this rhino beetle that is uh, on my computer screen. So what are my next steps? I'm going to secure my camera phone into place and talk to you about how you go from a photographic representation to sketches to wire. So you can see here that I've sketched out a rhino beetle and I get a lot of people saying, oh, I don't know how to draw. Don't worry about that. It's really just a way for you to start thinking about how you go from a solid object to something that's made out of line. So you can see here that I haven't really shaded anything. I've left the contours pretty blank. Um, and I wanted to select a rhino beetle just because I think these are some of the more difficult ones to translate uh, in terms of how they turn into line because they're pretty solid, right? So how do you go from a solid surface and think about line? Well, you, if you remember, I also had you look up uh, linear patterns, and this is where you get to play with design. You are inspired by nature, but you are making your own sculpture. So, you know, do you make the wire sphere that you're probably sick of at this point? Um, you know, if you look at the anatomy of this sphere, it doesn't really apply to the anatomy of the bug, right? So I'll show you in subsequent demos about how you're going to work with the wire to articulate more organic forms, but you can start thinking about those linear patterns that maybe were spirals or zigzags or, you know, paisley shapes, something like that. And maybe those are the kinds of shapes that you want to superimpose onto your bug. So let's just take the, the spiral, for instance. Um, if I were to make the abdomen of the rhino beetle, and maybe I would just need, you know, a piece of wire to be the, the bottom of the abdomen, and then maybe something that comes up to create the top of the abdomen, right? Because remember, you want to keep working with three-dimensional space. But rather than doing this sort of a thing, which, you know, could work just fine, what if you instead thought about... Maybe I want to put spirals on the back of my beetle. So, something like this, where you could attach wire, attach wire, and, you know, start filling the back in with a whole grouping of spirals instead. This is your chance to kind of conceptualize different ways of creating those volumes in wire. Um, maybe for the horn, you could think about grouping, you know, a bunch of wires, binding them at the top, and then they start to separate to create the front of the face. So it's kind of like, you know, some of you did, um, those cone shapes or cylinder shapes. It's not too far off from that. And then you could take a finer wire and that could, you know, wrap all the way around or you could do kind of a herringbone pattern, right? So the way that you fill in those framing wires, what we think of as the armature, could be different than what we see in the, the line rendering of the bug. Um, 
so start to think about how things translate from reality to something that's a little bit more fantastical where you have a bit more authorship in terms of the linear patterns that you're going to create. The next video is going to show you how to make a maquette.